Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to continue our Omega series by going over the zones and regions in Omega. It's going to, and uh, this is going to actually be really eye-opening. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. However, I must point out that it is a little different than some of the other themes. Uh, a lot of their themes have their own way of doing zones and regions, so it may not be totally like going into another theme, but Omega zones and regions configuration is pretty powerful by itself. So we're going to click Appearance like we did last time. We're going to go into your theme, click Settings, and then um, we're going to click Zone and Region Configuration. And you'll notice here that there's some things. We have three sections. Uh, the sections are header section, content section, and footer section. If we inspect our code here, we can look at our, our HTML. You can see here where all those exactly are. Okay, here's our header section, our section content, and our section footer all the way down here at the bottom, which there's nothing in it. So if you look in each of these, let's open this uh, div up, and you can see we have zone user wrapper, zone branding wrapper, zone menu wrapper, and zone header wrapper. Okay, and, and then so it looks like our navigation is within zone menu wrapper, our logo in uh, and brand are within the branding wrapper, and then the user wrapper goes above everything else, okay? So this right here, you might expect these zones to mirror what's going on in here. Well, you'll see the user zone, branding zone, menu zone, and header zone. Cool, so just like in content, we have preface, uh, content postscript, and then footer, we just have the footer zone. Um, and you'll notice here that we have all these zones, right? Uh, under here, we have unassigned zones. By default, there are no unassigned zones. I'm going to show you how to add a zone in just a second. Um, and we do have some unassigned regions. Um, however, we, you may not need to use them. I'll also show you how to add a region. Because uh, you may need to add these. You may These may not be enough. They may not be sort of the right the right thing. You might want it to be a little bit more semantic with what it's actually going to be. But let's say we don't want this user zone at all. Let's turn this thing off. So I'm going to click configuration under uh, under user zone and I'm going to tell it section none. Okay, save this, save configuration. And let's refresh our page here. And it's going to look the same except for inside of our, our uh, header, we now just have branding, menu, and uh, header wrapper. So branding, menu, and header now are the three things. We don't have anything in header yet. Um, and inside, uh, let's check out inside of our zone branding wrapper is our actual zone branding. So one of the things you're thinking is we can add new zones, we can add new regions, uh, and we can turn them off and on. What about uh, sections? Can we add or change sections? Well, the answer is no. They have it uh, set up so that you only have your header, your content, and your footer. That's how it is. Uh, if you need to do things outside of that, um, they actually have made it really easy to do so. Um, sometimes you might want, let's say, a wrapper that extends the entire width of the page. Uh, by default, every single one of our zones here has a wrapper. So this is zone branding wrapper. And inside of that is our actual zone branding. So that is controlled by this configuration here. If we were to say configuration provide full width wrapper, if we were to turn that off, then we wouldn't have that full width wrapper. And if you don't need it, let's say you don't need to style to the edge of the page for this particular zone, then just check it off. It's one less div you have to have. And it's one of those things where Drupal and Omega adds a ton, a ton of divs for you. And I don't always like that many divs. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Okay, and under here, under configuration, you'll also see some other options. Force zone to always be rendered. This is even if there's nothing in here, your zone's going to be rendered. Whatever styles you have attached to that zone, it's still going to be there. I usually don't have that checked because uh, I don't know, you know, it, it's the right pro the right project might have it. You need the zone to be rendered all the time. This I can't imagine why I would for this. And uh, customize region positioning. It allows you to manipulate the placing of the regions in the zone. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. And so here we have what section it's in. It's in our header. Well, since this is the very top one, let's give this a weight of zero or I mean, we don't have to change it because two right now is the highest, but just to keep track of things, 
our weight is where it appears in this list, whether it's below or above menu or header. And then the column count, 16, 12, 24. Uh, since our site is uh, by default, it's gonna be 16, or it's gonna be 12 columns. Uh, this is gonna be 12 columns. And the primary region, you can select a primary region for this zone. Um, if we click here and expand our regions, you'll see that it only really has branding. We don't need to set this for this. Um, here you can give additional zone classes and additional wrapper classes if you'd like. So I would like this full width wrapper around it. I'm not gonna change anything except for the width. And let's go into our regions. And regions we have branding, okay? So we wanna force this region to always be rendered, uh, is checked by default. And sure, I mean, this is the branding one in particular is probably already going to have stuff in it no matter what because your branding information. But if you didn't want this to be rendered, you could uncheck this. And this, again, just like how we chose the section for the zone, this is choosing the zone for the region. Okay, so this might get a little confusing. There's there's layers and layers, right? But your regions are the most granular thing. Inside of regions is where blocks go. And um, insides, inside of zones is where regions go, and inside of sections is where zones go. So it allows you a ton of control over where these blocks are. Um, and this, this is our grid functionality right here for this particular region. If we wanted this region, and I'll show you about this in a second here on another one, uh, we can prefix it uh, as many columns as we'd like. We can have it be as many columns wide as we'd like. Uh, we can have it the suffix be as many columns as we like, and we can have the weight be as high or low as we want here. And this weight is going to affect the media queries of this site, but we're gonna go over that in the lesson where we talk about media queries. Okay, so let's check out another one of our zones, which actually have uh, a few more regions inside of it. In fact, let's go to our site here. Um, I'm gonna close out of this. If we turn on these debugging blocks, what you're gonna see here is you're going to see our regions themselves. So this is our region, and the, um, like we said before, the branding was taking up 12 columns. It was the first one, and it was the only thing in the branding zone. So then we have menu, and if you'll notice here in our header, we have a header first and a header second. Well, those are a little bit more interesting, right? I think this is taking up six columns each, and uh, we can show you how to do that right now. If we come here to our header zone uh, under regions, you'll see we have two regions now. And just like before, we had one with a weight of one and two, so this one's gonna be higher. Uh, first, first in the line, this one's going to be second. And they're both six columns. And since our wrapper is 12 columns, they're going to take up the entire space here. So you could say, well, what happens if we add a prefix of three columns to this one? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to push the other one down. In fact, once we refresh this page, you'll see in a sec. Okay, let's check out our blocks. And now it's all out of whack, right? Our header first is pushed over by three columns and it's right here and therefore it forces our header second down here. And what these really are, this is has a width and it's being floated um, and this is just a margin on it. So uh, these are just gonna fill in just like floating elements like normal. So you don't have to worry about anything out of the ordinary happening. I mean, this is based on the 960 grid. So if you use the 960 grid, it's probably gonna be pretty familiar to you. Um, and also if we wanted to turn any of these regions off, it's just as dead simple as we showed you before when I turned off one of the zones. Um, in fact, let's turn off this header second region. I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the zone to none. And the header first, I'm going to have this still be six columns, but prefaced by six columns. And it's gonna be pushed over halfway to the right. And the other one is not even going to appear at all. Okay, so here's our header first. We got nothing here. And if we don't need anything there, then this is great. Oh, I, said, I should also point out that, uh, real quick, that if you look at this uh, preface first, preface second, and preface third, when we go to less columns, when we go to our uh, one column grid layout for our media queries, you'll notice they go in that same order, first, second, third. So that is also their weight, is going to change the order at which they stack on top of each other according to your media queries. Okay, one last thing. Let's show you how to add new zones and regions. 
So I'm gonna go to my code here and, uh, okay, and if you remember before, we went into the .info file in our theme and added the script. And back when we were there, you saw these regions and zones and all this stuff and you may not have known what it was, but now you do. And the easiest way to do this is just to show you here. So I'm going to add a new region and it's just going to straight up, I'm gonna call it uh, regions and it's menu uh, two. <laughs> And this is a terrible name for this, but uh, it's hard to think of something on the fly. Uh, menu two. Okay, so now we have a second re menu region, and I'm going to add a new zone, and it's going to be. Uh, let's have a. Uh, tagline, and this is going to be the tagline zone. So what you really just have to do is create a new one. In this, you're gonna want it to be lowercase characters, underscores, no spaces. And this is just a string for what it's going to be called on the front end. And if we save this in here, all we have to do is clear our cache on our site here, configuration, new tab. Oh, I already have it saved as a... I'm gonna clear the cache. Uh, and then we're gonna refresh, we're gonna come back to our grid here our zone settings and our new regions will be there in the unused set, uh, section. Scroll down. So now we have unassigned regions. Here's our uh, menu two and here's our tagline zone. Let's add this to the header and let's give it a big old weight so it can be at the bottom. And uh, we'll save this. And now let's put our menu two inside of that zone and we're gonna have it show up. So you can even see the tagline zones already showing up here. Menu two, we're gonna put that inside of a tagline. It's going to be uh, uh, 10 columns wide for some reason and we're gonna save this. And let's check out our site. When we refresh, we're gonna come to our debugging blocks. We'll click this and you should see right here, we have our menu two. It's taking up 10 columns, leaving two blank there at the end. And it's coming in right where it should be. So this is perfect. Now, uh, if you go to your blocks, you can add blocks of content to menu two or uh, anything you want here, any of these places, and it's gonna show up exactly where you'd expect it to. Okay, well, this is how to add new regions and zones. This is how to take complete control of where your content's going and how it's going to work within Omega. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. Also, you know, I do these videos in my spare time, so if you feel like you want to donate something to Level Up Tuts, uh, there is a donate button on our, our YouTube page uh, over on the right. There's like links or something. Uh, don't feel like you have to. The whole point of these is that they're free. But uh, if you're feeling like you want to or whatever, go ahead. You know, uh, this all always be accepted. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. This is Scott Talinsky with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching.